Hi everyone, Tom Slavin. I'm back with Mayor Daly. How you doing, Mayor? <laughs> Mayor, my Mike. gosh, what am Mayor. I talking about? Well, I, I just, I don't know. Uh, I'm doing demoted. great, Tom. <laughs> City manager. Thanks. All right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, listen, we're here to talk about the triple fund uh, restoration of the monies uh, right. that came, and I guess we got one year of monies. Why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, that? one year was restored when the uh, the state budget was signed. Uh, the budget included uh, reimbursement for the money that the county and the cities lost in fiscal year 10-11, okay. which was actually over a year ago. We just finished fiscal year 11-12, and we're going into fiscal year 12-13. So that's one year. There are still two years that we lost money in that we have not been reimbursed for. Okay. And then there's the issue about moving forward in fiscal year 12-13 and on. And fiscal year uh, uh, assembly bill 1191, which you've been talking about for quite a while, is the legislation wa that was uh, introduced by Allison Huber to uh, right. fix this on an ongoing basis, uh, moving into the future. It, it was going great guns and getting approved by every committee it was being reviewed by, including the uh, assembly, it was approved 75 to nothing. And then it went to the Senate Appropriations Committee about two weeks ago, and there was some concern there about um, the uh, mandate, mandated reimbursement for the, the work that would be involved in figuring out where all this money has to go. So they put the, f they put the bill in their suspense file until that information can get okay. worked out. And the, uh, the folks at RCRC are working with the county on getting that language squared away, and they hope to have it. Uh, re-reviewed by the Senate Appropriations Committee sometime either at the end of July or early August. Okay, in a way, this is not money that uh, uh, that's we don't deserve uh, to get. It was just because of uh, some language or, or the way that uh, uh, there was a... Uh, There's a loophole, a basically, loophole in the Revenue in and the Taxation Code when the economic recovery bonds were issued by the state in, in 2004-2005. Okay. So are we looking at like the other two years as uh, hoping we can get that back, uh, that money back as well? We're hoping that that's a possibility and the conversations that the folks that have been working with the county have had with legislative staff indicated that, that might be a possibility. Okay. Now you might be able to explain how the, uh, how the school district works into this too because some of the funds I think went back to the school district. Is that yeah, the, correct? The, you explain it. The school districts are either revenue limit or basic aid is how their okay. their money from the state is determined. And Amador County Unified School District fell into basic aid sometime in fiscal year 9-10. We didn't find out about it until February of 2011. So by the time that it happened, we had already lost one full year plus another half year of this money that um, we didn't know was going to be a problem. And the county and school district actually um, had to work out wh how to deal with the fiscal year 2009-2010 because the school district had gotten some of the regular money because it was unknown they were basic aid until the year had already gone by. So they've come up with an, a, a number on that. They've worked that out. That money's gone back to the school district. And the school district will continue to get the regular amount they will as a basic aid district, but the counties and the cities won't be shorted an amount that every other county and city in the state of California gets out of the triple flip. Okay, so do we think the uh, the streams to both the city and the county and the cities are, uh, if I say schools, uh, is a straight now? If only if AB 1191 gets approved. Okay, because so the we're only still action, awaiting the approval yep, of AB 11. The only action completed at this point was the state budget. Okay, and so the, and this monies came out of a direct language in the state budget. That's correct, and it was only reimbursement for a previous year, not moving forward into future years. Okay, so we still have a little of excitement trying to find out what's uh, what's going to happen uh, in the future. Yes, we do. Yeah. And okay, it, and it's a big amount for both the county and the cities. That's a that's a lot to uh, yeah. to the cities. Uh, all right, now let's move on to uh, something else that's going to happen in the future yeah. and it's going to make uh, Jackson look a little bit better in the county. Uh, why don't you tell us about the Jackson Vista Park restoration project? Yeah, the Vista Point, which is up uh, at the north end of the city just as you're coming right. into town right before, before you, you go down the grade and have that beautiful scenic view of Butte Mountain and St. Saba Church as you're coming into town. 
That Vista Point up there has been maintained for years by the Jackson Rotary Club, and right. they've done a very nice job for everything that's there. But as we were working on getting the funding for the Kennedy Tailing Wheels project, the person from Caltrans who we met with suggested that we also apply for Environmental Enhancement Mitigation Program funding to improve the uh, the look and the versatility and really the usefulness, the information that's there at the Vista Point. We applied for the funding, a uh, $326,000 grant, and it was granted to us. So right now we're working on finishing up the plans and specifications and hope to have the project out to bid by the middle of this month with award of bid um, sometime in August. Okay, do we have a slide up now uh, looking at uh, I think right how now it you've looks got now, a, a right? picture of what it looks like now. There's the uh, kind of information kiosk where there's a sign that was done uh, probably 15, 20 years ago. Some of the businesses and other references on the sign are a little outdated. Yeah, I remember uh, Ralph Merzlach repainting that. Yep. And going up and doing a show on uh, when they placed that back in there. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's uh, a real nice piece, and that's going to be moved aside to another place. Uh, there's going to be a, a whole walkway area built okay. out from the parking lot. Why don't we move to that new slide? There we go. So okay. the uh, that kiosk that has the uh, the current sign in it is kind of right in the middle of that. The the area to the bottom is a new ADA parking space that will be constructed, and then the uh, the kind of brick area that shows on the screen is uh, it's going to be all pavered. And then the wall around the edge will have about six interpretive signs that tell you what you're seeing, whether okay, it's... Okay, that's a dark, uh, dark line. A there, dark right? line. Okay. The Kennedy, Kennedy Mine head frame, the Argonaut Mine, tell a story about all the, you know, the hard rock mining, uh, Butte Mountain, uh, uh, St. Salva Church, and it's part in their uh, history. There will also be a, a, a large sign telling you what you might have driven by when you passed Sutter Creek and Amador City on the bypass about okay. their importance and relativity to uh, the, uh, the mother load era area okay. and all that. So that might draw people back to there that miss some, said, hey, exactly. this looks interesting, let's go back. Yeah. See this, huh? We're also hoping to bring the Caminetti, Caminetti Monument up right. there. And uh, the American Legion's uh, Veterans Memorial will get uh, lighting on the flagpole. Mm -hmm. uh, they also plan to purchase another picnic bench that will be ADA accessible. Uh, so it'll be a real nice spot. We're also bringing water down there that we haven't had. Uh, for a drinking fountain, and uh, it's really going to turn it into a nice stop uh, for people to really get an appreciation for what they're seeing right now. Okay, Mike Daly, City Manager okay. of Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, stay with us. There's more news on the other side of the break. You're watching Amador County's number one news and sports leader, PSPN.